our mission is to really make it more accessible to the average person that's often looking for like a quicker turnaround or a quicker impact. And so we have to have some tools that, you know, give that short term gratification while they under helping them understand that like you're not gonna lose fifty pounds overnight or you're not gonna, you know, drop your cholesterol seventy five points overnight uh, just by eating oatmeal twice. Welcome back, fitness friends. This is the Future of Fitness podcast and interview series, and this is your host, Eric Malzone, and this is episode number 120. I get to talk to Jonathan Levitt of Inside Tracker. So I think this is kind of like a two-part interview, right? The first part is really everything you need to know about Inside Tracker, right? The second part is all the cool and interesting things to know about Jonathan Levitt, uh, his podcast, uh, his uh, experience as an endurance athlete and what he derives from endurance sports uh, is really, really fascinating. Very inspirational, for lack of a better term. I know that word gets thrown out there a lot, but it's great. And I think you should go check out his podcast as well. In the first half of the interview, we talk about Inside Tracker and that technology. So, uh, no big secret. I like technology in the fitness and health space. I think it's transformative. Um, I think it's coming at you quick. And I think you need to stay on top of it because tools like Inside Tracker are something you can use within your practice to greatly add value and greatly extend your reach. So what is it exactly? Well, I'll let him talk about it more, but here's a quick summary. You get a blood test uh, every so often. I think it's every one to three months. Uh, they send you a report with uh, comparison to where your blood report was last time and what you should be doing, like the top five things you should be doing for better health. It's really simple, right? Very, a lot of complexity boiled down into simplicity. One of my favorite things to do right? So for instance, I asked him, uh, you know, what's the one thing that he's learned? He's like, without a doubt, with all the data that they have compiled and they continue to compile and side note, that's where all this stuff is going is the data collection. That's the most valuable thing. So he said, without a doubt, that men should be eating more oatmeal. <laughs> right? So I started eating more oatmeal. You know, it's delicious. I mix it with peanut butter and uh, I really enjoy it. So yeah, it's a great episode. You're going to learn a lot and I hope you enjoy it. Before we get into it, let's read a review from one of our listeners. Danny SB84 says, as a GM owner, I'm always looking for new podcasts to listen to that have new and valuable information in the industry. The Future of Fitness podcast, that's my show, is just that. Love the guests that are on the show. Keep it up. Danny SB84, I will. I will keep it up not stopping anytime soon. So thank you for leaving that review. If you would like your review right on the air, uh, go to iTunes, subscribe to our channel and leave a nice review and I will read it during uh, one of our upcoming episodes. It brings me great pleasure and I really appreciate the support. It means a lot and uh, helping build a community is something that uh, I know doesn't help, help happen overnight. It takes one listener at a time and I want you to uh, subscribe. So this particular episode is brought to you by Certified Course Creation. So if you have a niche within the industry, a deep subset of knowledge, right? Perhaps it's time. Perhaps it's time for you to stop trading your time for money and get your legacy out there, right? And it can all be done with certifiedcoursecreation.com. You, you, talking to you, you can have your own accredited certified online course. Yep. People can come to you for, to get your knowledge right? And you can make some money while you're doing it. Best part about it is you're not trading time for money anymore. The stuff works while you sleep. And it's a great way to set yourself apart within the field as well. So go to certifiedcoursecreation.com. It all starts with a simple phone call, right? If you're thinking, well, is this for me? It seems like a big project. No, it's not. It takes one small step, which is just go in there and booking a call. And uh, the cert team at certifiedcoursecreation.com will tell you if it's a good idea or not. And if you should pursue it because we have a great viewpoint of the industry and can tell you what's going to work, right? So go check it out. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is episode number 120 with Jonathan Levitt of Inside Tracker. Enjoy the show and let me know what you think. All right, and we're live. Jonathan, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to have you. And uh, you know, like we were talking right before this, I was randomly listening to a Joe Rogan podcast on my drive from uh, Big Sky to Whitefish, which is about a seven hour drive. And half of that was spent with uh, Joe Rogan as he interviewed David Sinclair, right? Um, geneticist and uh, anti-aging specialist. And you guys came up and I was like, oh, 
oh, great. I'm going to be interviewing this guy next week. I can't wait to talk about this stuff. And, you know, what you guys do at Inside Tracker is, uh, man, you know, I talk about it all the time on, on my various shows and, and between my clients of how, you know, biometrics are, are going to be just widely available and are going to change the whole landscape of health and fitness. And, uh, yeah, so enough of me talking, man. Give everyone a little background on yourself, um, how, you, uh, how you evolved to the position you are now. Um, yeah, that was a great, uh, great podcast, and uh, and we we've loved how many people have uh, have gone on board and started to take action to help improve their own you know, health and performance uh, as a result of it. But yeah, um, so I got into the health and wellness space uh, a couple of years ago now, uh, working for another company that was all about uh, sports nutrition and working with a lot of athletes, and most of our customers were marathoners, and I never run a marathon. And people were asking, oh, how do I use this product for, for marathons? So I was like, okay, what the hell? I'll just sign up for a marathon and figure it out. Um, and I say that like kind of jokingly, but also kind of serious. Um, I had a bunch of friends that were running marathons and, and uh, thought it was a good, good time to do it. Uh, so my, the first race I signed up for was a marathon. Um, I ran a half marathon in, in training leading up to that. Um, but I finished that race in pain and also like wow this is like that was some crossing that first finish line of that marathon was uh, a joy i'll remember for the rest of my life and it was like you put so many hours towards training and it was like this cul perfect culmination that was imperfectly uphill <laughs> uh the end there and um and it was just like it was insane it was i just loved it so much um so I fell in love with, with the endurance racing, uh, pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, fast forward a couple of years, I was at an event that inside tracker was, uh, sponsoring, uh, called executive athletes hosted by Ken Lubin. Um, and I was talking with the CEO and company president and founder about what I was doing for work, which was essentially growing a brand ambassador program from nothing to you know, 500, uh, ambassadors. And he was like, why don't we hire you? And <laughs> so that's how I got to where I am today. That was, that was uh, over four years ago. Um, and it's been, it's been an incredible journey. I was you know, one of the first 10 or so to start working here at Inside Tracker, And we've quadrupled in size since then, um, which has been really cool to, uh, to watch, watch evolve. Yeah, uh, awesome. So what is your role over there in Inside Tracker? What do you do? So I focus um, primarily in the endurance space, working with endurance athletes, coaches, teams. Um, I do some work with uh, pro sports and working with uh, strength trainers at uh, on major league baseball teams and, and hockey teams. It's been primarily those two in the in the pro sports department. Um, and yeah, just working working with athletes and non athletes to to get started and and make the most of it. Yeah. Awesome. And I, I have to give a plug out to Joe Bauer as well, because he introduced us from uh, all around Joe.com. He's got a couple of great podcasts as well. So uh, thanks for the connection there, Joe. Yeah. Joe is a great guy. He seems to know everyone and he seems to have done everything, which is super cool. <laughs> yeah. I got to meet him here in Boston and uh, we were talking about his, his own endurance pursuits and, and strength pursuits. And, you know, he's a, he's a CrossFit coach that's done 50 milers and he's got yeah. that, uh, that desire to, to go longer and to run really long, stupid distances just to like figure it out. Like, can I do it? Yeah. Um, and I find that fascinating. He's been, he's been cool to get to know, um, over the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool guy. And I believe right now he's, um, he probably stopped by and saw you on his, uh, his van trip, yep. uh, as he's, uh, him and his girlfriend, I believe, uh, are, uh, traveling around their sprinter van all, all across, uh, hitting all the, the national parks. They made a stop in uh, Whitefish too, I believe. Yeah, not. I don't think they did. I think they were close to Glacier, but I don't know if I was there at the time. But uh, yeah, I, I I look forward to, to meeting him in person. So, um, man, tell us what what is Inside Tracker? So Inside Tracker. So there, you know, you can you can make so many different decisions around training and supplementation and diet and lifestyle, mm -hmm. and you can see the same food on a uh, eat this, don't eat this best foods for runners, worst foods for CrossFit athletes. And it's the same food. And there's just so much clutter out there that exists around uh, diet and supplementation and, 
and things like that, that people are just, um, you know, paralyzed with, with too much, too many recommendations that are yeah. opposing, you know, the same study will say, or different studies will say, wine is terrible for you, or wine is great for you, or, you know, carbs are the enemy, et cetera. Um, what Insight Tracker does is our goal is to cut through that clutter and help understand who are you and what do you need. So it's it's not um, best foods for humans. It's best foods for Eric or best foods for John mm-hmm. and and best foods for, for that person right now based on your current diet and lifestyle. So at a high level, what we do is tell you what the best changes to make to your current routine are. So eat this food X number of times a week. Uh, here are some recipes to help you, you know, get it into your diet. Um, take this supplement in this specific dosage, you know, 5,000 IU vitamin D or 120 milligrams of magnesium. So very specific around the, the frequency and um, what it does for you. And so we, we pull a bunch of information about um, food frequency, exercise, and lifestyle. And then based on whatever your goals are, we can say, you know, you could do 2000 things differently tomorrow. These are the three to five things that are, that are best for you right now. Mm -hmm. Do this. So it's again, stealing all the, all the science that's out there around nutrition and supplementation and performance into here's a roadmap for what you should do. If, if, you know, boosting energy is your goal or if better sleep is your goal or reducing injury risk, whatever it might be. Um, That's, that's our core personalized guidance. Oh man. Um, so you just earned yourself at least one more client. I'm in, uh, you know, it's funny when we spoke months ago, you mentioned you're like, there's one thing that you could definitively tell men is that they should eat more oatmeal. Yep. Yeah. So why? Yeah. So we looked, we looked at some, uh, so we have a, like a check-in feature that Mm -hmm. allows us to understand at at least some level, what are people doing with this information? And so we can look at baseline to follow up tests and understand what are the interventions that people committed to and then self-reported what, what did they actually do? So we looked at, um, we looked at some of the most frequently chosen interventions and the most frequently, um, Prescribed to intervention, so we found that oatmeal has basically the highest impact for men, and has potential to improve uh, cholesterol, glucose, inflammation, so hsCRP, uh, and testosterone. So basically, these health and wellness and performance-related areas um, all ha- stand to be improved by eating oatmeal daily. And I've seen it with my own data. Um, you know, I eat oatmeal every day now, and that's a that's a change I made. I used to hate oatmeal. Now I love it. I put you know, peanut butter in or um, chia seeds or blueberries or whatever. Um, it's a protein powder and, and um, yeah, it's had a, <laughs> it's had a measurable impact um, and it's definitely helped. And so it's cool. We can see, um, we can see stuff like that, like what works and we can also see what doesn't work. So you always hear uh, vitamin D is, you should you should have optimal vitamin D for performance and for sleep and mood and recovery and all that good stuff. People are like, oh yeah, eat fish, eat mushrooms, eat you know fortified dairy, things like that. And we looked and we found that the only um, meaningful intervention was vitamin D supplementation. So hmm. for some, the fish and standing outside and all that stuff worked, but from a t- statistical significance standpoint, if you want to improve your vitamin D you must take a vitamin D supplement. It's the only way to, to, to guarantee it'll improve. Whereas some other values can be improved through, through nutrition instead or diet instead. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, vitamin D, um, you know, I lived in California most of my life, but now that, you know, I've been spending, I've been moving North systematically, uh, you know, over time it's, it's been a big thing. I, I take, uh, a ton of vitamin D just because I, I, even if, even on a sunny day here in, in Northwest Montana, you're not going to get that much vitamin D. Right. And, um, but, but even still we, we have, uh, like pro baseball players that are training outside at spring training, whether they're in Florida or they're in Arizona and they're outside for, you know, three to seven hours a day, still, still low. And so it's, um, it's just all so unique that you can't assume that just cause you're standing outside, you're getting that getting that impact. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've been really excited to talk to you because I have this vision, right. 
of how I, I've actually somehow found myself as a, a person that people ask a lot of questions about fitness technology and health technology, because I mean, dude, I'm not that technical as a person. I can't explain to you how it works, but I talked to enough companies in, in this area, enough uh, devices. I mean, just this morning, I talked to three different SaaS companies for gym software, right? And when I look and I get asked this question, like, well, what is the, what is the future of it look like? Right? Well, obviously the name of my show is the future of fitness, but, um, I, I see it like this, you know, I see like the stuff that you guys are providing, right? Real, almost real time, if not, you know, very, very up-to-date information on the individual, um, how their, their biometrics are shifting over time, what needs to be supplemented. And I see it hopefully bridging a gap between the health and the fitness professional. Right. Um, do you share any of that vision? Like, how do you, how do you see this, this work in between those two faculties? Yeah. So our goal is really to continue to, to innovate in the, in the tracking and analysis department. I think a lot of the shortcomings that exist out there are over promising and under delivering or like mm -hmm. capturing data that's meaningless we're capturing data just for data's sake sure. the same for paralysis by analysis like you're you're looking at things that you can't really provide guidance on so so our our mission is to to pull in as many different data sets as as possible so you look at one day microbiome or you look at physiological tracking or monitoring so like where garmin watch you have resting heart rate you have sleep data you have activity data and and to be able to provide insights on on top of something that you're testing quarterly or biannually or something like that to something that's getting tracked literally every minute or every night or something like that that's where that's where you can truly make make the impact there's a lot of um, you mentioned the you know the, the SaaS products there's a lot that's that they're tracking that you don't really do anything with with the data um are you wearing a what's what's the ring you're wearing oh it's not an aura oh, okay i'm gonna get one soon yeah. yeah yeah so like stuff like that um it's super cool because you can make meaningful data you can make meaningful changes with the right type of guidance um i know it's sort of like a different answer to to the question but um that's that's our mission yeah. So give us some details, John, like how, how does inside tracker work? Right. Um, from both like an end user to a coach, like how, how does give us, give us those insights, the nuts and bolts. So in, in most of the country, what you can do is you can log on, order a, order a plan from our, from our site, with our ultimate being our most comprehensive. We send you a lab slip. So you order a plan, you tell us food frequency, exercise, lifestyle. So we're personalizing this to you and your specific needs. And then from there, we send you a lab slip. You print that out, bring it to a local lab, and they do a blood draw. And we receive the data within about a week or so. And then um, we say, okay, here's what to do. And then the idea is, you know, in three to six or nine months, you do another test as a way to help evaluate that progress and see how, see how those interventions that you've selected. So build meal every day, once a day fish twice a week, something like that. Um, see how that has impacted at the, you know, at the biochemical level and, and what else you can do to, to continue to improve. Okay. So it's, um, it's like, is it a subscription subscription based service? So the way that it works right now is you order a plan. So you order a test and, um, you pay basically pay per test. So we offer a discount when you order multiples. Okay. Uh, as a way to help evaluate that progress. Um, and then, yeah, so it's, it's not a subscription uh, today, but um, yeah, it's per test. Okay, okay. And then, um, so how does the reporting come through? Is it come through, like you guys just send a report and then has very, very, very specific action items to take yeah. from it? So there are two different ways to look at it. You can either look at it per biomarker. So we create an optimal zone based on your specific demographic information. Uh, so looking at height, weight, age, gender, activity level, and ethnicity. Um, so, you know, 
your normal range might be here, but your optimal range is here or here, mm. or somewhere in the middle. So we give diet and lifestyle based guidance on how to how to get into that optimal zone. And then you can also click and see the reference studies that we're, we're using to make those recommendations. So the way the platform works is our science team has basically compiled a, a massive database of, of PubMed studies that fire specific recommendations based on who you are and what you're trying to achieve. So if high this, low that, male, age this, uh, runner, uh, then show this recommendation. Or if CrossFit athlete or female or Asian or African American or whatever. So as specific as as possible, um, they get a recommendation that's specific to that that demographic. Um, and then the other way to look at it is is a goal based approach. So instead of looking at the individual biomarkers, you can say I want to boost energy or I want to. Uh, improve longevity or overall health and the system will will go from the you know 2500 things that we can recommend for you down to five and your five are going to be different than my five and they might be different each time around based on the based on the data or they're different based on the goal so the platform will pull the six to eight biomarkers so nutrient hormone levels that are related to those goals and look at basically the most efficient foods that are going to target those areas and help optimize those areas. So let's say there's been a research study on, on beans, uh, improving cholesterol. If you eat beans four times a week, so we don't know. So we know that you don't currently eat beans because you've reported that let's say your cholesterol is a problem and you're willing to eat beans. You'll see a recommendation. You should eat beans four times a week to improve your glucose and cholesterol levels. Whereas if you're already eating beans four times a week, and we know that, we're going to recommend something else. So, you know, eat more fiber from this source or um, take a garlic supplement or, you know, something like that, that will, that will address um, basically the next most valuable if you're already doing the, that most valuable. Yeah. Interesting. So it sounds like you take a lot of very, very uh, complex data and you give people the easiest steps. Exactly. So it's, yeah. it's sort of like a, uh, like a cheat sheet to, to progress. And so yeah. we've done work with, um, with some pro sports teams that are like, I don't have time to go through all of the, all of the data that you guys are providing with, uh, our athletes with, what do I do? So that's where that action plan was born out of. It was, uh, basically, a, an automated, um, consultation that says, do this X number of times a week, do that X number of times a week, given that specific person. So now we have pro teams that are literally printing out this action plan, putting it in the locker of each athlete and saying, here's your plan, mm -hmm. go do, you know, for three months and we'll check back at the all-star break. Um, something like that. Whereas previously they were getting no nutritional support or they were seeing somebody in, in spring training and that was it. Um, or they would see someone, you know, in the off season and that was it. Yeah. And, and so now we're able to say, look, here's, you know, Joe Schmo's, uh, recipe for success. And here's John Smith's recipe for success. And here's Eric's recipe for success. And so it's that personalized approach at scale that allows a coach to, um, have meaningful, uh, impact across the board for, for a large group of athletes. We have, um, military accounts that have, you know, hundreds of operators that, uh, simply don't have time, uh, for better, or for worse to, to spend, you know, an hour with each, uh, soldier. And, and so they're getting this highly drilled down and, and customized plan that you can have a five minute conversation about, about how to take advantage of the foods that are already available to these people. You should look at the fish and you should look at the meat and you should look at, you know, just take the, take the damn vitamin D supplement. Uh, so it's, it's cutting out, um, you know, hours of analysis on the, um, provider side so that they can do what they do best, which is the applied side. So yeah. what, what we do on the back end is way more complex than any single human can possibly process. There, there are literally dozens of variables that go into, um, 
the recommendations that we make and it's simply too much for a human to to do um, but if you're getting the output you can help whoever it is apply okay you should eat the the high iron uh foods at this time of day away from these foods or you know they can help with nutrient timing or they can help with uh you know when when or how or what supplements to take uh, so it's really allowing a, a healthcare provider or healthcare professional to do what they do best, which is that support role versus, um, you know, getting into the weeds of, of all these dozens of variables. Yeah. So, uh, Jonathan is, it, do you have John or Jonathan? Either is good. John okay. Mark. John. Yeah. Uh, genetics. How's that, how's that coming to play? So, um, whereas the, the blood testing changes every time you do it, your, mm-hmm. your genes don't. So, um, there are a lot of companies that, that are, or a lot of people are interested in using genetics to create customized meal plans. And mm-hmm. the problem, the problem with doing something like that is you can't evaluate progress because it never changes. And there's no way to know, is it working? Like you may have a likelihood to have high cholesterol, but you might not have high cholesterol. Or you might be more like, like I'm, I'm likely to have um, low magnesium and I actually do have low magnesium. So I'm not able to, to replenish my magnesium stores from a dietary standpoint. So I need supplementation. So the, the genetic testing sort of confirms and validates things that we see in the blood work mm-hmm. um, or can give uh, higher um, power, higher higher confidence to needing to focus on something. So let's say you are, you are more likely to have high cholesterol, but you don't have high cholesterol, but you're borderline. Right. You might not have thought, Hey, my borderline high cholesterol or my, my borderline, my optimal, but borderline high cholesterol is not a problem. But now that you know that it is down the road or it's potential to be a problem, you might, actually, you know, think about focusing on something like that. Um, and then there's some stuff that's more of the entertaining variety, like st- strength or endurance focus or, or power versus endurance. Uh, it's a ratio. Um, it's just sort of entertaining to, to hear and, and see that some of our elite endurance athletes, their, their likelihood of being elite endurance athletes is higher, and they are. <laughs> it's just cool to see some stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we have a, a DNA plus blood report that that merges those two data sets um, and matches what uh, what your likelihood is with what you actually have. And then each time you complete a new test, new blood test, it refreshes that report and and gives you new guidance as a result. Hmm. So what, like, how many? You know, if you have an estimate, like, how many of your clients or end users are, um, you know athletes or just general population? So I'd say it's mixed. Um, so you mentioned the Joe Rogan uh, podcast. Majority yeah. of the people have signed up from that, and there have been a lot. Yeah, um, those are the people that, like, that's the general population. And that's, you know, there's 250 million of those types of people uh, that are just interested in, in feeling better throughout their day. Whereas we have tons of, of high-level athletes or just athletes in general, you know, someone with a desk job that, you know, likes to run far or, um, you know, strength train in the morning. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty good mix of, of each, both using the platform for very different purposes in a very similar way. So our mission is to really make it more accessible to the average person that's often looking for like a quicker turnaround or a quicker impact and so we have to have some tools that, you know, give that short-term gratification while they under, helping them understand that, like, you're not going to lose 50 pounds overnight or you're not going to, you know, drop your cholesterol 75 points overnight uh, just by eating oatmeal twice. Uh, so it's, it's balancing the, you know, the athletes that are using it for that 1% when they're you know, running 100 miles or um, training for the CrossFit Games or something like that uh, and, and balancing that with the our mission being to help um, all humans improve uh, health and quality of life through a personalized approach. So we go to the populations that need us. Like we know what it's like to be injured or 
bonk or uh, not have enough energy. And, and that's a tangible problem that we're going to fix or like I have a time goal or I have a distance goal. I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to achieve that. Whereas most people would, you know, they'd like more energy and their boss would like to have, like them to have more energy, but it's like, it's not necessary. Yeah. Uh, it's not a pain that you have right now. It's a problem, but you don't need to fix it. But, um, you know, if you're running a marathon and, and you're exhausted all the time, like <laughs> you need to fix that. Um, so that's sort of the discrepancy between the, the, the two populations. How, how big are you guys now? Like how many end users do you have roughly? How, how's the company doing? Yeah. Well, the company has been around since 2009. Um, we have tens of thousands of users. We just published our first paper uh, and the first paper uh, of its kind in the industry um, last fall, basically validating the, the approach of algorithm-based nutrition guidance. Um, we went, like I said, you know, five to ten employees when I was when I started. We have almost forty now, uh, so it's it's a sign that uh, people want this, and and the industry is um, is is supporting it. Um, when I started, my role was basically convincing people, hey, you should you should think about doing this, and now my role is, hey, we're the best. Uh, you've probably heard about this from other companies that are spending tens of millions of dollars on. On advertising, our platform is better, and here and here's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, wh- where do you think this is all going? I mean, and this is this is still early stage yeah. stuff, right? Like, we're w- put me like five years in the future. What, what do you see all this type of tracking and and technology going? So, imagine that your your smartphone pings you and says. Um, Hey, you don't have a meeting between uh, two and three. It's sunny out. Your vitamin D is low. You haven't moved in a while. Go for a walk. <laughs> uh, it's sunny out, and, yeah. and it's like it's sort of like that life coach model where um, the goal is extreme personalization. And for some, that's too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for others, they're looking to to get this type of guidance in, in all aspects of, of life. Like we're building a, a meal planning tool where for athletes, they're, they're able to understand, okay, on a high training day, this is what I should be eating on a low training day. This is what I should be eating on an off day. This is what I should be eating. Um, and then, like I said, merging the, the physiological monitoring data with microbiome or, you know, all of the different data sets so that, Oh, you slept poorly last night and this is becoming a trend your magnesium is low and your vitamin d is low you should uh you should take those supplements you know before bed and we'll see if if your sleep improves and you know a week goes by oh look your sleep your sleep quality has has improved or two weeks or three weeks or whatever your sleep quality has improved that's great keep doing what you're doing yeah so it's it's that um it's that more frequent feedback loop um one of the big pain points today is that you actually have to go in and get a blood draw and like it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. They put a needle in your arm. It's not, it's not comfortable and uh, it's not fun. Yeah. <laughs> so like, like the, the biggest hurdle is that people are afraid of needles, myself included, and uh, they just don't want to do it. And so there are things that are, um, there are products that are being created that are going to allow the, um, the blood draw component to basically be a non-issue. So there's a company based here in Cambridge that um, it's basically using uh, like a vacuum technology, micro vacuum technology. So you, you put it on your, on your arm and it uses this, this, they're micro needles and it uses this um, vacuum technology to extract a very small amount of blood and they, they can support, I think it's 30 different biomarkers. So basically our, almost our entire, uh, testing, uh, line. Imagine if you could do this on a weekly basis for, you know, 5% of the cost that it is today, you could get really detailed insights into how your, what you're doing is impacting for the majority of people. That's, that's way too frequent, but think of a, uh, baseball team where they have five pitchers, 
and they want to know who is best on what amount of rest. Mm -hmm. So a, a conversation we've had has been, can this athlete go on four days of rest? Can this athlete go on five days of rest? Can, does this one need an extra day? And how do you optimize the, the guys on a roster based on the, you know, the moving parts? So we had this idea or a team had this idea to test four times around a start and understand, okay, who needs more or less rest? And how do we, how do we optimize our rotation based on who needs what and when? The concept of doing four blood draws for a major league baseball pitcher in season, it's probably too, probably too much, probably too much blood um, in season, and you're not really getting a reliable read um, in the off season. But let's say you can do that for almost no impact, then you have these extreme um, these ex this extreme amount of information around how do I get that that last one percent out of out of each athlete, and how do I how do I get the most out of the the guys that I have available? We got a very very direct answer from uh, from the military one day, and they were like, uh, "When you're when you're fit, you're harder to kill." <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> so it's like at 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 the at the very you know basic level, um, readiness is a factor, and and we're we're doing more and more to military, and it's super cool to be to to help optimize uh, these men and women that you know their life is on the line yeah. and the more that we do to help their readiness the better they're able to do their job which is in return helping us all yeah yeah wow man there's so much to think about here what you know so obviously it sounds like there's going to be you you can see some kind of ai component coming into it right that processes the information gives people that feedback hey go outside take a walk right where where are you guys in line with with that type of development i guess it's in progress um we're working on the integration with some of the wearable devices um at the moment that's that should hopefully be it should hopefully be out this year um in terms of uh receiving uh sleep data and and activity data it should be in the next couple of months um some of that uh higher level you know do this now Type stuff is definitely further down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, probably need some sort of app to facilitate that, and we're, yeah. we're starting to work on the development of of that app that can support that type of uh, insights. But people want it, and pe and and people are moving to uh, having that data accessible always. Um, there's been a lot of changes in healthcare that make uh, the security and, and accessibility more. Uh, uh, readily available and, and possible um, with some of the regulations that have changed and some of the uh, capabilities that have been created. Um, so it's cool to see that like, that desire is there and that need is there. And, and we feel like we're at the forefront of uh, delivering that with guidance to, to the population. John, what, what other technology are you keeping an eye on within the industry? Is there anything else that fascinates you out there? Um, I like the, oh, is there anything else that fascinates me? Um, that's a good question. I haven't thought much about that. Um, I mean, there's, there's just so much, there's so much that's being exposed around like this doesn't work or this, you know, the, they over promised again. Um, I love all the, the technology around, uh, the training that I'm doing mm -hmm. and and so I'm a big Garmin fan I use Strava uh, and some of the technologies and capabilities that, that they're building in from a predictive analytics standpoint or a, like a readiness to to perform uh, standpoint is is interesting and then it's sort of like a, a catch-22 like what if it's race day and your watch is telling you you're you know you suck and you're not <laughs> you're not ready to go <laughs> like what about the mental what about the mental aspect of of seeing that you know you're minus four today or you're yeah. plus 10 like well, what if i'm not plus 10 um so there's there's a lot being talked about in the in the um, 
psychology side of things and the, the mental side of things. And I think the more that we can do to support that area and, and uh, bringing out the best uh, from a mental standpoint, uh, there are all these headphones that vibrate in a certain way and do these certain things that, um, you know, if you can, if you can get the most out of yourself from a, from a mental and mental health and mental, um, readiness standpoint, uh, that's super cool. Like my best races have always been when I was like super happy and surrounded by friends that were also racing. And like, how do we, how do we elicit that type of response? And maybe it just has to be, uh, right right day, right time. Um, or maybe there's something that, you know, we can, we can help, uh, stimulate that, uh, response. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. And I agree. I think, you know, with all of the metrics that we have available, especially like HRV and, you know, essentially what tells us how stressed are, are we at that given moment from a, um, you know, from a physiological standpoint, it messes with you. Like you may wake up and be like, you know, let's say, let's say it's a non-athlete. Let's say it's, you know, someone who has like a big, uh, presentation that day right at their office or whatever and you know they wake up one morning and their hrv tells them that they're you know in the amber or in the red and uh then it really started messes with them they wake they woke up feeling fine right yeah right but now they got this thing in their head like i'm not optimal i'm not optimal what am i gonna do right uh, sorry boss i gotta i gotta push to tomorrow yeah yeah yeah. i got i got amber on my on my HRV, dude, I can't do this. I can't do this presentation today. I think that's a really interesting thing about it is like we, we, um, as all of this evolves and just gets more and more incorporated into daily life and we just get used to it, right. Even relying on it is, you know, we can't seem to forget the, the human component of it all. Right. Yeah. Interesting, man. Yeah, getting with a sports psychologist on my podcast, uh, later today and, and we're, we're diving into some of those questions around like, what do you do if you get to race day and you're just not like, you're too nervous or you're, you're not feeling it or like you know, stuff like that, where you can't just bail because you're not ready. Right. Uh, and how do you apply that to, to regular life as well? Yeah. yeah it's a dilemma. Yeah. Let's talk about your podcast, man. I know it's uh, kind of just you, how long have you been doing it? How many episodes are you in now? So I've recorded four. Um, I've released none. Nah. I uh, I'll, by the time this one airs, I'll probably have released. Uh, I'll probably have released the first one, or I will hopefully have released the first one. Uh, I'm planning to do it today. Um, the podcast is called "For the Long Run," and the goal is to explain and and talk about what keeps people motivated. What what's exploring the why and, mm-hmm. and understanding. Um, what gets you out of the door or what gets you out the door? What gets you, you know, onto the trails, onto the roads, uh, on a daily basis. And, um, the, the theme so far has been, I've spoken with a couple uh, pro athletes and a couple, um, people that have been doing it for a while, um, and a coach. And the, the theme has been, uh, loving the process and not, um, not being tied to the outcome, which is really interesting if you think about a professional athlete who, you know, their, their salary or their contracts are outcome based. Yep. It doesn't matter that they love their job or it doesn't matter that they love training. If you're not, if you're not, um, achieving results, you're not going to you know, get, get that next contract. And so I asked, I asked, um, Ben Rosario, who's the coach of the Hoka, uh, Northern Arizona elite team. So he's got, he's got 15 athletes that he coaches that are all professionals. And I said, like, how do you, how do you balance between the outcome and the process? Like, man, if you love the process, the outcome will come. Like you'll, you'll get results. If you're, if you're bought into the process and the journey, uh, you don't have to say, I want to win the New York city marathon. Or I want to, you know, take third or podium or you have to love what you're doing on a daily basis and, and find ways to enjoy the ups and the downs. And if you do that, the rest is gravy, but it, you know, you should figure it out and the the results should come over time. And so, yeah, that's my goal is just to explore that conversation and understand who these people are and what, what, what gets them excited. And then what can, what can other people learn from it? Yeah. And so my work with 
through my work at Inside Tracker, I get to travel a lot to races and, and meet these athletes. And I, I've been having these conversations for three or four years over dinner or over coffee. And I felt like I've been just like hoarding all of these like incredible gems of uh, insights. And like I, I asked this question to a guy in uh, Colorado Springs. We had just run up the, the Manitou incline and uh, and ran back down and then uh, we got dinner. I asked asked him a question and he talked for like 20 minutes. And I'm going to need to go back and have that same conversation again because it was just like full of of gems that that people can take away, whether or not they're endurance athletes or, or athletes in general. But I was just having these conversations on a regular basis. And I was like, I need to, <laughs> I need to share this. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's the goal um, with, uh, with for the long run. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I mean, almost all of my, my greatest lessons in life business have all come from sport and fitness, you know? Yeah. Um, and some of my most, I guess, prized memories come from sport, you know? And, uh, you know, it's, it's a really fascinating thing because you, it's just not, it's not just the physical, it's, it's such a mentally demanding, especially in endurance, man. Um, you know, I got into half marathons, right. And <laughs> marathon and, uh, you know, I don't know if you ever heard of the peer to peak one in Santa Barbara, California, but that, that one I did three years in a row. And that was some of the most grueling other than mountaineering was some of the most grueling mentally yeah. challenging things I've ever done. You know, you run up a hill for 13 miles yeah. and, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's super cool because you there, I read a, I think it was an outside magazine article that looked at, um, successful like traits in successful people and many of them were endurance athletes and these lessons that you learn you know before 8 a.m transfer over to your day-to-day and your work life and and your perception of like what you can what you can do and so like here at inside checker we have these massive goals to help the lives of all humans Hmm. and whether that means every single person becomes a customer or we do things in a way that, you know, affects the food chain or, you know, whatever. Um, there are things that would scare a lot of people and including us uh, in terms of like the scope and the scale of, of what we're trying to achieve, but it's possible. And, and the only way, you know, if you, it's a corny line, but you know, shoot for the moon and, or shoot for the whatever, shoot for the stars and you mm-hmm. miss and you land on the moon. Right. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you apply that to a marathon. Your goal is sub three. You run three hundred five, three ten, whatever. You've still done something pretty freaking awesome. Uh, and so these these lessons that that you learn in in sport, like anything is possible. Uh, you can do more. You can. You're always capable of of pushing further or um, hurting more or you know whatever. Uh, that's relevant in, in all aspects of life, whether it's work, whether it's personal life, whether it's relationships, um, it's transferable across the board for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's that thing where you, you know, you, you start training or you start working and eventually you adjust to that workload. Right. right. And then you're, it, it becomes automatic. Right. And then once it becomes automatic, then you're able to do more complexity on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. And you continually level up. Right. And that's a, you know, I always say that simplicity allows for complexity, right? Because if you can just, when things become automatic in your life, then you can start working on things that are bigger. And it really comes down to just habits and repetition. Yeah. You know, like life, so many problems in life uh, can be solved by repetition and habits, right? Sure. Yeah. So what, out of curiosity, what made you, what, what, why a podcast, right? Why not like, um, interviews, you know, on a YouTube channel or, um, even writing a blog, like what, what fascinated you about podcasts? So I think that it's, so my goal is to do most of mine or as many as possible in person. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I think there's a rapport that you get from in person or even like what we're doing screen to screen here. Yep. Uh, But even, even still, there's just like, I did a podcast in Flagstaff, um, with a pro runner that was out there and she came to the hotel and we sat in the lobby and we talked for 20 minutes and you just like build that rapport with, with people. And then you have those things that you can talk about 
five minutes later, 10 minutes later, whatever. Yeah. And, and you don't get that sort of emotion and you don't get that um, rapport in a Q and a, you know, Hey, I'm going to email you some questions. Um, I don't really like video. So I chose not to do, uh, not to do YouTube. Yeah. Um, but I got you here. <laughs> you got me, yeah. um, so, so the other problem is um, doing so much of, Doing, doing some of these podcasts on the road, like I'm learning quickly that you need to really <laughs> figure it out uh, and figure out where you're going to record. Yep. Uh, I had dinner with a with an athlete in Phoenix and we didn't record a podcast because we were in a busy restaurant next to a highway and there was nowhere possible to do it. So I missed an opportunity um, because I would rather have done it uh, in person, face to face. We'll probably do it at some point. Um, but you know, these complexities that you know, the, the payoff of doing it in person versus over the phone or whatever, um, I feel it's, it's worthwhile uh, to, do it, to do it that way. And then in terms of why, I guess, finally answering your question, <laughs> um, I love listening to podcasts while running and um, specifically on, on long runs only. Um, and so it's sort of like a double, like I'm planning to release them every Friday so that People can listen to it to the for the long run podcast on their uh, own. I get it. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, full circle. Got it. For the long run. Literally. I'm gonna I'm gonna take credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great, man. What are some of your favorite podcasts? Um, so I love listening to the Billy Yang podcast. Um, Billy is a content producer, filmmaker. Um, he has his way of just like pulling out people's guts. And, and I mean that in the best way possible, like yeah. spilling what really matters to people. And, and his podcast is really an inspiration. And, and um, his, his podcast, I don't remember if it was his or, or Mario Frioli's, who's another uh, runner and coach, they were chatting on, I think it was Mario's podcast, um, about the, the state of digital media and how like, like everybody has a podcast these days. Um, and what they got down to was iron sharpens iron. And the more, um, the more people that are out there, the more it just requires everyone to step up their game and elevate what they're doing. And the two of them are really able to, to lead really interesting conversations with not just elite athletes, but, um, elite humans and people that are just really freaking awesome. Um, and so that was a lesson that, uh, Eric strands of ultra runner podcast gave to me is like yeah don't just get people that you know won a race and you know that's why they're famous find people that have a really compelling story and a really interesting um experience or or whatever and and don't just talk race results and so that's really been the approach that i've taken i mean fortunately most of the people that uh, many of the people that i'm planning to interview have also achieved athletic success but they're, they're super interesting people on top of that. So I have a feeling that we're not going to talk a lot about, you know, so-and-so winning Western States or, or blah, 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 coming in third at New York City Marathon or you know, whatever. Um, but rather, like, why did you get into it? And, and where, where do you see yourself? And, and uh, how, how is what you're doing helping the next generation and, and stuff like that? Um, that's more than just like, yeah, I ran really fast and I'm proud of my result and blah, 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 blah. Um, there's enough of that that exists out there and, and yeah, I don't want mine. <laughs> I don't want mine to be that. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing about podcasting and, uh, you know, I'll kind of make a couple of points here before we wrap it up, but, um, yeah, there was a lot of podcasts out there, uh, but the overwhelming percentage of them are not consistent. Um, you know, don't get past, uh, episode seven. Right. Right. Um, so the numbers are, are not entirely, uh, revealing of the truth. You know, um, I think something like that, Ben, Ben Reuter, who has a moving to live podcast, we were talking, um, recently, he'd be actually, he, I'm sure he would love to have you on a show. Uh, we're, we're recording Tuesday. Oh, you are. Okay. <laughs> See, dude, it's a small world, man. It's a small world. Um, that's everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really funny, but you know, it's, you can ask him, he has a stat, but I believe it's something like 60% of, of podcasters haven't released an episode in like a year. Right. Wow. So people start, but they don't continue. 
Right. And, uh, you know, anything like we were talking about, you know, anything worthwhile is going to take repetition. It's going to take time. Um, yeah. It's going to take habits. And, uh, you know, that's a cool thing about it. It's, it's an art form that, in my opinion, uh, you know, um, it's an art form. That's it. You know, it, it takes time. You know, the art of the discussion, um, understanding what people uh, want to hear, pulling out stories, just so you're talking about the guy who can pull out guts, right? Yeah. Um, that's, uh, it's, a, it's a really cool thing. And you know what? It translates to everyday life, too. Uh, yeah. although, um, sometimes I'm sure my wife cringes at dinner parties with some of the questions I ask people, but <laughs> like people are so superficial these days and yep. they know, like, what do you do for work? And what do you, you know, blah, 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 blah. What kind of car do you drive? Who cares? Ask, like, ask questions that, um, why are you here? What do you, what, what gets you up in the morning? And you'll be the most interesting person at the dinner party. If, if you're just like, spitballing these questions and people are people are talking because people love to talk about themselves and love to talk about like what actually matters and there's there's a lack of that in the um, social media world these days and it's all just like had the best vacation ever or like you know whatever um yeah. but but these you know that that's how i think people stand out it's you know who's asking the the tough questions and um actually getting an answer and, and moving things forward, which is, which is cool. Yeah. Well, and it's not just asking questions, but actually asking questions to hear the answer and not just think about what you're going to say next. Right. And, uh, one of the beauties of podcasting too, that I really love is, um, and I talk about this every now and then is that, you know, for this period of time, for this, you know, 45 plus minutes that we've been recording, um, I haven't checked my cell phone. I haven't looked at my email. I've just been all about John. Right. And, uh, those moments in time nowadays, it's fucking rare, yeah, it you know, and, uh, I wish there was more of it, but this, this provides, even though we're not in the same room, right. I'm all about John right now. Right. And that's rare. Well, you're, you're, I'll show you where we are. We are, we're in this little, uh, little tiny cubicle of, of a little, uh, it's like a fish tank. Yeah. So you're, you're sitting over at the other side of the fish tank and, uh, we're having a, a good chat here. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's awesome, man. I, I really love it. I'm, uh, I'm excited for you to start on your, your podcast journey. I think it's really cool. Uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll do an amazing job with it. So, um, John, give us a little insights. If, if people want to get involved in inside tracker, um, or they want to find out more about you, get in touch with you, where, where do they do that? Yeah. Inside tracker.com is the site. Um, I'm sure we can set up something for your listeners. Um, and, and we can include that. Uh, I'm JW Levitt. L E B I T T on all forms of social. Just like to keep it easy. Um, I tweet a lot. I'm on Instagram. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. Awesome, awesome, man. Well, John, thanks for coming out and, and talking about the tech. Uh, you know, keep us updated. And if you know when something big comes out, uh, let me know. We'll get you back on. We'll talk about it again. Uh, sounds like a plan. Thanks for having me on. Right on. All right. Have a good one. Hey, fitness fans, don't leave yet. It's your host, Eric Malzone, and I have a quick favor to ask. Actually, three favors. So, number one, if you're a fan of our show, I ask you to do something that takes under three minutes. Go to iTunes, please, and subscribe to our show. Please, please, please. It means so much to us. It's so important. And then give us a favorable review. We would really, really appreciate it. And uh, I can't tell you how much it means and helps us out. So, it only takes two minutes of your day, and uh, it means a lot to us. So, please do that. Number two, go to our YouTube channel or Fitness Marketing Alliance and uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel there. Number three, if you like this episode or any of the episodes that we've released, share it on social. That's huge. That's a big deal for us. And uh, we put a lot of work into these episodes uh, trying to give you great actionable content uh, for the fitness industry. So that would mean a lot. And that's it. So we have some big plans coming up for this show. I'll be talking about that in the next couple episodes, but thank you so much for listening. It means so much. And uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from everybody. Eric, E-R-I-C at fitnessmarketingalliance.com.